Okay, so uh, I work for, for mentor part of Siemens now uh, for about a year. Um, uh, anyway, so and I work on, the, on a product called Caliber. It's an uh, electronic design automation analysis tool. Um, so we have a, it's a large C++ application. I've talked about it a few times in other conferences. Uh, one of the things that we have is a, there's a lot of uh, tickle interfaces that let people get at things that are inside of the, the tool and manipulate them and, and that sort of thing. So one of the things that we've run into uh, with this is we'll, we'll build up large C++ data structures and let people uh, uh, move through them and explore them in, uh, from, from within Tickle. And uh, so the management of those, uh, of those large objects is really critical for uh, ma memory management and making things simple for the user. So we want to give them an easy Tickle interface to create this large data structure and then make sure that when they're done with it, it can go away. And so of course, you know, Tickle doesn't have garbage collection. Um, and then we, we found that the managing the lifetimes of those objects is, is kind of a challenge. And, uh, uh, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem that exists in normal uh, Tickle application, just on things like file handles. So that's the, the example I'm using through here um, uh, for most of the things. So look, if we look at, uh, Sort of the standard thing you do when you're going to write to a file, you open the file, put some stuff into it, and then you close it. If you don't close it, it's likely not to get uh, flushed and uh, strange things will happen. Um, so you want to make sure you close it. Well, so that, that gives you some, uh, some uh, difficulty with managing the lifetime of it, especially if you're maybe opening it in one place in the program and trying to close it someplace else. How do you make sure it gets closed? So. Um, so you, you, you might forget, you, somebody might put in a return before the close, might throw an exception from some command before the close. Um, it, there's lots of ways to end up not closing the file. Um, so how do, you, how do you get around this? Well, so the, uh, one of the kind of the uh, canonical things is trace will do everything. Trace will, will, will follow the things you need and tell you when it goes away and then you can, and then you can get rid of it. So you can uh, create a little cleanup proc and then uh, open your file, set the trace, and then write to it. And uh, at the, there's no close at the end, but the close gets called because of the trace. So that that works uh, works pretty well, but it but it has some problems too. Um, you know, it, it you have to you have to remember to put the trace on. It's another uh, you can't just create an object and use it. So you have to know there's a file to be closed, and and uh, so you know, so it's it's the responsibility on the user close the file and not if you're trying to create a file object uh, or maybe even have other hidden uh, resources in your object that have to be closed, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really work. The, the other thing is uh, it, do, it doesn't work at the global scope. Now the, um, uh, the documentation that's for trace says that it works. So if you, instead of putting this in a proc, if you just put that in a, uh, in a script and run it with tickle sh, this thing never gets called because the trace never gets fired. Um, it says in the trace documentation that uh, unset gets called at the end when the, uh, when the uh, uh, interpreter is closed, but I think exit uh, gets you out before that happens. So, uh, so basically that doesn't happen when you just have a straight tickle shell. So, uh, um, so those are the, 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 the two big problems with that. It doesn't, doesn't work in a global, just a tickle, tickle SH script. And it also, uh, uh, you, you just have to remember to set the trace up. It kind of gives you more, uh, more things. So now you can hide, if you use something like iTickle or, or uh, uh, Tickle OO, you can, put, you can create a destructor and have it do certain things. But still, you have to, and when you're using it, you have to first create it and then, and then delete it, delete the object at the end. Now, uh, uh, there, there is actually a way in iTickle. So you still have to call delete. You have to worry about that uh, exception or the premature return. Now, there is this thing called iTickle local. So that does kind of interesting stuff in that it, it makes the, it makes the uh, destructor fire when you 
uh, leave that prop. So it basically says we'll create a local variable. So I was like, yeah, that, that's that's really what I need. How does that work? <clears throat> so started kind of looking into the un, under the covers of I took a local. So the, the, you know, the, 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 it it does mostly what you need, but it it still puts the the uh, responsibility on the user to say, I, I don't want a normal object, I want a local object uh, in order to get it cleaned up. But uh, it's kind of interesting to see what it's doing under the hood. So if you write a little bit of, start, start using the info command to see what, what's going on, if, I suspect if maybe trace was involved. And uh, so if you write a little bit of tickle uh, around that uh, uh, tickle local, you find out that there's a special magic variable. I tip a local dash the name of the thing you're trying to trace, and if, the, if you if you write out info uh, info variable on the uh, to, to find the trace information, it finds out you find out that there is an unset trace on that special variable. I tip a local f1, and it's I tip a delete helper. So it's actually it's still creating a global object, but it just sets this trace, and, and uh, uh, so you can you can do your own uh, your roll your own version of that. You don't have to use iTickle. Uh, so create the same cleanup thing we had before, and then uh, so I'm going to create a proc that's going to say I'm going to uh, uh, open a file and close it. And I'm going to do it in the in the scope of the thing that called me. So I'm going to create a function here that's going to open my file and then set it up to delete itself when it goes out of scope. So uh, what I, I do is go ahead and open the file. I want to work in the in the uh, uh, calling processes space. I'm going to create a secret variable up there. This is the this itickle local dash f1 that we saw before. Um, but it, but it make sure that thing is created. I'm going to trace it up there as well. So it's going to call my clean up the file, and then I'm going to return the file handle, and the user can can uh, uh, use that. So then, the, what the what the uh, user does is they, he calls it with my special method, and it creates the file. He can then uh, write to it, and he doesn't have to close it. It'll go away uh, when the when uh, proc returns. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a little bit of a Ro Rube Goldberg thing. You set up a bowling pin, you tie a string to it, and then you tie the string to the trigger that uh, opens the railroad track and lets the, uh, uh, lets the car go down the street or whatever. Um, so you know, so there's a, little, little, a, lot of, a lot of moving pieces. It doesn't really seem like uh, uh, a very nicely constructed system, but it does, it does work. Except a global scope. So if you uh, uh, if you go back, if you if you try to do this, if you call this from global scope, again the trace doesn't fire, and uh, so it has to be called from inside of a proc, as we see here. So that the so that uh, the key is that when when uh, uh, when not fh, but the secret secret variable gets um, unset, then the trace calls and, uh, and it gets cleaned up. And so a, a, little, a little bit a little clumsy and it uh, doesn't work at the global scope. Um, and so, so the try finally mechanism also gives you another way to do the close up, but that also puts the uh, uh, responsibility on the user. It couldn't think of a way to sort of hide the uh, try and the finally, if somebody might be able to uh, uh, figure out how to get uh, the try and the finally separated from one another. But, uh, uh, and that one actually does work in global scope. So you can put that, uh, put that code in a tickle script and it will close the file and print out the closing the file message uh, uh, even at the global scope. Um, so anyway, so the, the the, uh, uh, we finally have something there that works globally, but uh, it still it puts a lot of onus on the user to set that up. Um, we'd really like to have something that's a bit more just say, give me my thing, do stuff with it, and when it goes away, I want 
with a large C++ object that the user has created to, to just disappear. Um, so something that almost works, works kind of like 90% of the time, especially if you're not uh, doing too many string things with it, is this, uh, in the tickle obj type, you've got this uh, tickle free internal ret proc. Um, it, it, it works except when things shimmer. So uh, shimmering would be if, it, if a user does something that causes it to convert to a string and it goes, tr converts away from the uh, tickle obj type that you set it up as, then your, uh, uh, your, your object will go away too early. But it is very easy to set up and it's, set, it's easy to set up an object creation. And really what we want to do is create something, put a tag on it that says, this thing is, is uh, working for a great big C++ data structure that I want to delete when the user's done with it, so I can free up memory, and, and then give it to the user, let them do all they want with it. When they're done with it, I get a notification back and I can delete the big, uh, the big object. So it pretty much works except when things shimmer. And uh, so the, the motivation or, or the, kind of the pattern of, of all this is, is a, a in C++ they call RAII, which is Resource Acquisition is Initialization. And basically it's that idea that you want to just, uh, you, you want to grab something, have it do all of its initialization, and when the, when you're done with it, the destructor will fire and it will take care of all your uh, cleanup and you don't have to, you know, you don't really have to worry about it very much. So this is a little example, C++ doing the same thing we were doing before. It's going to create a file, and then we can use the file and when we're done in the destructor, uh, if, if there's a file, it'll close it. And so when you use that in C++, you can use it on, on a stack, which is to create the file and then write to it. You don't have to do anything more. It'll close the file at the end of the, of the process. You can also use it in a uh, more of a, say, say on the heap, if we say in C++, so you create one, you can pass it around to lots of different places. Um, this one shows an example using the, uh, uh, the <coughs> standard shared pointer, which is kind of a little bit like a tickle hodge. Uh, it's a reference counted thing, so you can pass it around. People are going to have copies of it. They can all work on it. And finally, when all the uh, references uh, go away, the reference count will go to zero and the thing gets deleted. Um, so the use, is, use of it there would be, say, I want to create this uh, this factory that is going to create one of these things. It uh, um, builds it up, returns it. I then have a, a pointer to it that I can use to print things to, and I don't have to worry about when when I fall out the end of main, it's going to be deleted. It's, it's going to be deleted and the file will be closed. So that's uh, that's kind of the the motivation. I'd like to have something in tickle that was that kind of simple and that easy. This is a really kind of a key concept in C++, since it doesn't have garbage collection, we want simple ways to manage memory and so forth. And uh, so this is really one of the things they drive into you early on in C++ is to how, how to write code that does this, rather than you can also say, uh, uh, new something up here and then delete it down at the bottom, similar to the way you have to do a tickle. And you know that's, that's kind of frowned upon there. It's not, not supposed to write C++ like that anymore. So really, uh, I'd, I'd like, it seems like Tickle tick almost gets there. We've got like three different mechanisms that do almost the right thing, um, except for uh, either not working in, in the global scope, being a little bit of a Rube Goldberg thing where you're relying on one variable to tell you when another variable has gone away. Um, Oh, and, and then the issues with shimmer on the tickle object type. So it'd be nice to get something that would overcome those mechanisms. Anyway, so that's the talk. And uh, if you have any other or any other mechanisms for deleting things or, or figuring out how to do that, I'd love to hear about it. Any questions? Well, we'll call it for you. mean in terms of on the unset? Do you need a functioning exit command? Uh, the scripts sometimes use the exit command. It, the exit and the global scope thing is not too big of a problem for uh, for our scripts because if you exit, you're exiting and 
uh, usually that, that's not soon, so memory's not your concern there, but if you have things like uh, databases you need to shut down or that sort of thing, that would limit the effectiveness there. So we don't run into the problem with, with Exit or with the global scope. We're usually, everything's inside of a proc anyway, so. So that's, that's just one of the things I noticed in trying to set these uh, examples up. If you can do without the exit command, mm -hmm. and your scripts are running in either tickle sh or some other executable that's built around the tickle main routine, mm -hmm. then turning ex or replacing exit with a no operation prop okay. will solve your it doesn't work at global level. Oh, okay, so then, then the, it'll clean then up. Then you'll have a, a clean okay. tear down of the inter. I was wondering if there was some kind of thing like that. Okay. okay. That's the only way you can do it because exit complicates things. <laughs> right, it doesn't, it doesn't do the traces, I'm guessing. Right? So, and faster, so, yeah. Yes? Um, so, uh, I've encountered this obviously before. Uh, and we've got a, a small little GitHub published called GC Class. Mm -hmm. which incorporates a lot of these ideas with, with the subtle change mm -hmm. and that instead of uh, uh, new or create as your kind of constructor uh, methods, you have ins class and you pass it a variable name to create a new scope and the press is applied to that. Right. Into that it writes the object uh, command name. So the pattern is uh, foo ins bar h like my file name. Right. Dollar h read. And when that when that h goes out of scope, all is overwritten. So if you're in a loop, that's right. fine. Yeah. The inst bar that overwrites the it updates the value. So the right trace fires, right. It closes your previous one and the new one. Uh, so it ties. In, you don't have this kind of separation with a secret variable and and the, the thing. That right. You're right. So you can actually trace the thing that you're. Yeah. So so if you if you if you pass in. So I did try that. I didn't show the that example. If you pass in the variable that you want to have set, then you can actually trace on that thing rather than tracing on something else that you hope is uh, close by. It's sort of the icicle uh, example. So um, yeah, that, that that pattern definitely uh, uh, works and, and solves some of the other problems there too. Also with the, with the update, because in the secret variable case, if you're in a loop, you need um, so say, say that again if you're the So if you're in, if it's this hidden thing that's not visible to the programmer and right. you're in a loop and you're each uh, new instance is creating a new secret variable in uh, in your call uh, frame, uh, you none of those implicitly do the uh, remove of the previous loops instance. Right. So you Oh because the, because you've only got one that's the the, the Rube Goldberg uh, uh, thing falling down because mm -hmm. yeah. and if you, if you, you right. try to yeah. solve that by having only a single like a fixed secret right. uh, name. Yeah. Uh, if you have two separate things that use that approach, they all solve on each other. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so something that you see if they have languages like Java and C and C sharp is that they have a specific piece of language syntax to say yeah, here's a block. At the end, delete the object I created at the start of this. And there's a and there's a way of saying uh, and you just uh, then you just click and then you then you, the fact that you declare the thing mm -hmm. at the top, then at the end it's just it's just closed. Right, yeah. So the the C plus plus example that I should the first one should did that where they, they basically that's just what they call it, 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 it a, a, a variable just, on the stack. Yeah, will um, go when it goes out of scope. In the case of those ones, the ob objects are specifically participating in, in this and that thing. Say, right. That say, at this point, you will be told you're going to close. Right, right, right. And, <coughs> um, no reason why we couldn't uh, have such a thing. See, it's so trivial, it, it, it's, it's, it's basically almost trivial to script right. using, using try finally because that has. And has the underlying semantic handling, it's just right. right. Or, or more robust than the onset trace. Yeah, the, so the inset trace, if, as long as you can get it on the right thing and you don't have to run the string from the bowling pin to the other thing. Yeah. Inset traces. Inset traces have different problems in that. 
Uh, they don't fire if you don't override exit. They, they, well, okay, I was thinking the lung set traces you know, in the scope. For in the scope, scope, yeah. For a very low scope. scope. Right, but yeah. So and then, and so that's what that's what the ITICL local. I mean, so you're yeah. so you're 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 kind of describing what ITICL local does, right? Um, no, ITICL no. local is using the it's using the unzip trace. Right. Yeah. So it's right. but I mean in terms of syntactically, that's that says no, this thing no, no, goes no, away. It, what, it, what it's doing is it is it's using the it's, it, that's uh, I'm, I'm describing a structural technique, not a uh, not a. Uh, Oh, I mean, just in terms of you were talking about the, what, what C sharp does C -sharp, C -sharp in, in, in Java. You have this mechanism that you can declare something and say it should go away, and, 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 and it goes away when the, when the flow of execution is syntactically, which is in the flow. right, right. So, so and, and, it and that's out of it yeah, or whatever. right, and that's more or less what I tickle local is supposed to be doing, also, right? I tickle local is just the untraceable, right? Yeah, that's different, Tra yeah. So I think uh, I think exactly what you're saying. I use that pattern um, to control structure type of dealing. Mm -hmm. So I'll say uh, something uh, with item, some identifier, variable name, scope, mm -hmm. and that's script that's running at up level, and the that thing goes and retrieves that construction object for it, and up level runs the script inside a try with a finally that uh, that kills it. And okay, so I yeah, I'd, like I'd, I'd love to see that written down. I can't, I can't, I can't the editor in my, in my brain is not keeping up with all that. It's like an, the, yeah. it's like an if thing. Right. I'll keep turning into the scope of that. Yeah, thing. yeah, so maybe, maybe after we get it, get it. Yeah. He's, he's describing what Java is called try with resources. Yeah, I'm not yeah, a Java, I don't know idea. Java. <laughs> the word try, like you're used to. Yeah, right. And before the block, mm -hmm. parentheses, Creation of variables that have resources. Okay, right. That when the block exits, even in an exception condition, it right. actually calls the close method of those variables that were created. Okay. It's not just destructors, it's actually right. like you have to be closable. But that okay. way, you, you can't be, as a programmer in Java, you'd be forced to handle the exceptions. Right. But this way, it's like, oh, but I know what you're going to, what I want you to do in the case of the exceptions is essentially call the destructors. Right. right. So it makes that makes it all into one syntactically smooth pattern. Right. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay. So um, I think we're set up for break stuff at the back end of the room. Um, but we take a twenty minute break. We'll get back starting up again at uh, twenty to eleven. Yeah.